This is Chuck. And this is Karen. And this is our show. What if it really works? A practical guide to spirituality. And we're here again in Weaverville, North Carolina. And it is October 5th. And this, what? What are we looking at here? Are we looking at a bee or a person? Or an <laughs> <elf> or... <laughs> You're looking at an Apis mellifera loving hussy. Oh. <laughs> That's the honeybee. <laughs> Wonderful. There we go. There this we go. is Deborah Roberts, and we are so grateful to be able to come here and share her space uh, and share the space with the bees and the, all the other wonderful animals and creatures that are in this valley. You are so welcome. Welcome to Western North Carolina. And we'd like to be on record as thanking Two Trees for introducing us to Deborah and to making this transcontinental connection that she's done. <laughs> And so here we are. Um, why are we mm. photographing you? It, gosh, you have to answer that. But I think that uh, the pollination trail probably brought you to me. I'm a, um, a great lover of bees. And that's something apart from uh, long, deep love that connects me with Kaylin as well. We have that territory in common amongst many. So I think that's why you come to talk to me, so I can talk B. <laughs> <laughs> and it just so happens her dog's name is also B. Yes. That's B E A. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you if you stay here long enough, we're gonna slip B into your names as well. <laughs> <laughs> so so what's the deal with bees? Well, in the world at large, they're a very challenged population. Uh, some people have called them the canary in the coal mines. Um, what they're up against is a species, all species are, but in regards to them in particular, um, they've been challenged for some years and uh, scientists have called the, the phenomenon of it a uh, colony collapse. So it's going on. Uh, we're seeing um, it just touching it to Western North Carolina a little bit too. There's other areas that are probably more affected, but the whole world, um, there's no debate about the fact that, that the bees are challenged. So what's emerged, I think one of the great things about crises, you know, is that two-leggeds, um, and the, the birds are endorsing this, um, step forward and rise to the challenge. So more mainstream people are aware of the, the preciousness and the importance of pollinators and honeybees in particular and more women than ever in the whole history of beekeeping are stepping forward into beekeeping and you know what happens when women step up and out it's it's having a very felt effect in uh, beekeeping now is that because of the nurturing that the women that women bring to that particular profession i think so um if i look at women stepping up and out in every way i think that that's that's often it and when i was first reading the, um, you know, about, I don't know, four or five years ago when, when Colony Collapse was rearing its head and was heading into the mainstream, I was seeing reflected in our own bee community, which is huge. We have probably the biggest bee club um, in the nation in Buncombe County. We have over 500 members and adjoining counties have a huge contingent as well. That's right here, right? That's right here in this area. We have, wow. I mean, we have a, um, a bread basket for bees. So this is like a very biodiverse area and it's very good for bees. It's one of the great bee areas. So I was watching a lot more women come into um, the bee clubs the, the year that I did and then subsequent years. Um, there's more women working on the master beekeeping, um, which doesn't define them. There's a lot of great beekeeping women who aren't um, pursuing that, but that there are as well, and that's been traditionally more a territory of uh, men choosing to do that. So it's, I think the nurturing, um, I think that's definitely true, and it's playing out in our ways in the yard, too, which is extremely interesting to me. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and you picked a great, a great day for bees. We're in what's called the third honey flow here in western North Carolina, so we're really happy when the um, goldenrod and asters bloom. It's not a given every year, and that's the last flush of... Uh, nectar and pollen that's very strong and it when it happens it's a it's a great boost for the food stores for bees going into winter so it's a great bee day today i've spent a lot of my time in urban areas and the basic thing i know about bees is stay away from them because they sting you <laughs> right because that's that's like that's the lowest r level on the totem pole right <laughs> well what's interesting is um I, I started something called the Honey Bee Project years ago, which is now in the hands of another wonderful woman. And I did, I've presented to thousands of children and their parents and, and teachers. And 
The honeybees do sting. Um, many pollinators sting, but honeybees, when they sting, they die because their sting has a barb that grabs into mammalian um, flesh and doesn't come out, so they're, the, the end of the bee detaches. It's a sorry thing. So if they sting, they die. They do not want to sting us. And for people who are um, allergic, it's generally yellow jackets and hornets or wasps, and those other pollinators that can sting can sting till the cows come home. So. When people are afraid of getting stung, it's usually yellow jackets which nest in the ground or um, some of the other pollinators that might have something under a table or a chair or a picnic table. Honeybees, um, if you get stung by a honeybee, it's because you probably you know, almost stepped on them in a flower or in the grass or if you're a beekeeper, you're in the hive or standing in front of the hive. But it's, it's a less frequently you get stung by a honeybee because it's, you know, it's in its last hurrah and it really doesn't want to do that. So it's not really anything to be afraid of with, with honeybees. It's, it's usually the other pollinators who are also somebody's children, so I love them too. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, one of the things that we heard before we met you was that... Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> now you really need to work on your sense of humor. <laughs> but but what, one of the things we heard was that, that you are in communication with the bees. I think all beekeepers are. I, I think that that ranges from, if you're a beekeeper and you're a good beekeeper, that, that ranges from the literal, listening to them every day because you, or every time that you're in the yard, um, there's a certain of, amount of information you gather orally and with all the senses beyond just the visual. And mine extends to, you know, other realms too. When I first started beekeeping from the first day I got my bees, I felt compelled to put my ear to the hive. And so every day, um, over all of these years, even in the winter, I put my ear to the side of the hive or the back. And it's just a way of, you know, if someone says, what's a happy sound? Um, most people think of, you know, a, a summer's day in the apple orchard. And if, if people think of an aggravated bee sound, it's like, you know, they're, they're going to sting you or something. So there's maybe two sounds. Well, if you are an oral beekeeper, which I am, you'll hear, you know, 25 happy sounds. And you'll hear 20 versions of like what is that, or, or, or upset, or queenless, or the fabulous queen piping sound. And that's a body of information that I get that includes also, don't come in the hive today if you're thinking of checking to see if we've got good food stores, we're fine today, stay away. Or um, a lot of mystery, which is, I think we're ever and always in relationship with the mystery. And it's been a source of great information uh, from the literal to the, the mystical. And I think that's available to every beekeeper who's paying attention. That's a drone. Let's see. See, I, it, with some of them, they've got yellow balls on the back of their legs. That's uh -huh. the pollen basket. And it's a glad-hearted um, thing for a beekeeper to see this happening because it means that it's one yeah. of the, the signs that all is well in the hive because they need that for, for the babies, for the... Um, for the larva in particular, it's, it's, a, it's a protein. The, the pollen is a protein and nectar is a carbohydrate. So when you see a lot of this happening, it's that a lot of pollen stores are going to go in the hive and that's, that's a great thing. You know that probably all is well in their world. 